What do you have to be able to do if you want to become an extra on the set of The Walking Dead? How are the walkers made so shockingly realistic? How much CGI is there on The Walking Dead? Hi, my name's Dylan, and you are watching Awesome Movies. Let's go! Old School Zombies The post-apocalyptic flesh eaters on The Walking Dead are absolutely gross, and the creepiest thing about them is how realistic they look. But at the same time, they are one of the major reasons for the show's immense popularity. The big question is, how are they actually created? And the answer is, the team of visual effects artists of The Walking Dead, led by Greg Nicotero, bring the walkers to life with practical effects. This means that while CGI becomes more and more common, for the most part, Nicotero prefers old-school prosthetic makeup techniques. The thing I'm most proud of on this show is that it's given us an opportunity to shine a light on practical makeup effects and the people who create them," says the legendary special effects artist. In a world where people are so enthralled with digital effects, it's amazing to have artists who are able to create these effects practically and palpably. And these people are sculptors, painters, designers, and other professionals who make the walkers so terrifying and shockingly realistic. And speaking of realism, Greg Nicotero once planned on following his physician father's footsteps and going to medical school. So his vast knowledge of biology surely helps him achieve the accuracy of the grisly effects. Now let's find out more about the process of making the walkers. The Walker Makeup An army of zombies is created by an entire assembly line of makeup artists. First of all, they give the extras who play walkers the illusion of exposed teeth. This is created with the help of dentures, which are mounted on the outside of the actors' faces and cover their lips. The dentures are the basis for the classic zombie skull-like look. As the zombie becomes more decomposed, Nicotero says, the skin stretches and reveals the teeth. In the first seasons of the show, when the walkers were… a bit more fresh, the dentures were not needed that often, and the actors used colored mouthwash to get the dead mouth look. To get rid of all the live colors, the performers would rinse their mouths with a mixture of liquid black or brown food coloring with a little mouthwash. The dentures are then incorporated into a full face or partial prosthetic piece. In the earlier seasons, over-the-head masks were also sometimes used. We were shooting in Georgia in the summertime, Greg Nicotero recalls. We didn't want the performers to overheat. So the makeup artists used 3D transfers instead to create the wounds, scratches, and minor decomposition marks. The 3D transfers are applied like temporary tattoos. You put it on the actor's face, spritz it with water, peel it away, and you have an instant wound, says Greg Nicotero. Also, nylon stockings are soaked in fake blood and glued into wounds to look like torn muscle and flesh. But as the series progresses, the walkers become more and more disgusting as their bodies continue to decompose. That's why in the recent seasons, the special effects artists had to rely on more elaborate prosthetics. The next step to making a walker is applying proper makeup. Surprisingly, there's not much of red, blue, and green in the palette. Instead, the yellowish-brown base tone is applied, and then some sort of dried blood colors, like brown and purple. All the colors are very muted and earthy. As a finishing touch, the actors are sprayed with lots of sunscreen, because the Walking Dead series is being shot in broad daylight when it's 100 degrees. The Haunting Eyes and when the makeup is done, it's time to put in contact lenses that mute the color and life out of the actor's eyes. There are at least 60 sets of contact lenses, and each pair has been hand-painted. Some of them are bloodshot, some have cataracts, others are yellowish and look diseased. We design new lenses every season because the eyes become more dead-looking and cloudy, reveals Greg Nicotero. And what about the hair? The visual effects team uses four bottles of conditioner a week to make the walker's hair look unkempt, flat, and matted. Well, these zombies look terrible, but at least they smell good. And in the latest seasons, the extras who play walkers also wear wigs to simulate the idea that their hair is starting to fall out because their bodies are decomposing. Types of walkers When dozens of walkers are needed on set, you have to know a lot about time management and the allocation of responsibilities. When the first seasons were in production, Greg Nicotero revealed that there was an assembly line of four permanent makeup artists who could finish 40 to 50 zombies in an hour. But as the makeup becomes more elaborate with each season, we can assume that nowadays there are more makeup artists. 
The number of zombies involved in the shooting varies from day to day. Sometimes there are 60 to 70 walkers to work on, so the makeup and costume design teams divide them into several groups depending on their time on screen and their distance from the camera. The so-called hero makeup means that this walker will have close-up shots and his look should be detailed. The mid-ground are not intended to get too close to the camera, so they will mostly need highlights and shadows painted on their faces to make them look dead. And those in the deep background only need dirty clothes and cursory makeup. Blood and gore. In the post-apocalyptic world, there's a lot of blood around. If you pour a little bit of blood on the ground, it's a little blood puddle, reveals Greg Nicotero. But if you dress the blood so that it looks like an explosion, visually, it simulates violence. So when you shoot a scene where there are a dozen walkers on the ground, you've got to put blood around all of them. And he found out a brilliant method for achieving authentic splatter patterns. They filled balloons with blood and threw them in the air. And wherever the balloon would hit, it made an explosion of blood. Just imagine how many gallons of blood the visual department goes through each season. Hundreds of gallons. Of course, all this blood is fake blood, and it is manufactured in-house. There are two kinds of blood, because the texture is important. Thin blood can be sprayed, so it is used in the art department for wardrobe and for makeup. For dressing the set, thick blood is used. Combined with oatmeal, pieces of foam and latex, which simulate tissue, bone fragments, and brain matter. Digital magic. However, no matter how great the practical effects are, some digital magic is needed sometimes. And the most spectacular example of this is such a natural thing as blinking. Because, you know, it's only natural if you're alive. So in post-production editing, all the blinking among the walkers has to be digitally removed. Also, the extras who play the walkers do not have to groan and moan on set. All the zombie sounds are added later. CGI is also used in the scenes when many zombies are killed, especially shot in the head. The old school effects with squibs are still used, of course, but as Greg Nicotero explains, when several zombies are being killed off in the same scene, it's not practical to do a head hit on all six of those zombies and do it in a big wide shot. In that case, digital technology allows them to edit the shot and determine which head hit they want to accentuate. The walkers changed over seasons. And did you notice how the walkers have changed over the seasons? As time passes, the weather takes its toll on the walkers. In the first seasons, when events take place right after the zombie apocalypse, their clothes and bodies are relatively intact, although their eyes become more yellow. Later, their eyes are beginning to sink deeper, the skin gets discolored, it dries out and keeps falling off, bones become more and more visible. Their teeth and jaws get broken from all that constant biting, their hair becomes thinner, and limbs are missing sometimes. By season 10, several years after the apocalypse, the walkers continue to gradually decay. They barely resemble humans and look more like skeletons. This means that there's a great need for extras who have really big eyes, long, thin faces, and long necks. How to become a walker extra? And now it's time to tell you about the details you need to know if you want to become a walker extra. If you are an aspiring actor and eager to become a part of the Walking Dead series, you'll have to go through the training to make it. Every season, the show employs up to 200 extras to play walkers. As we have already mentioned, the showrunners tend to employ thinner people who have a specific kind of bone structure. The thinner, the better, so that when all the necessary makeup and prosthetics are applied, the walkers still look thin and gaunt. Although the contenders have to go through auditions with Greg Nicotero, which are affectionately called Zombie School. The future walkers spend an entire day doing exercises on how fast they should walk, what their character or personality is, and are told how their performance can make or break a scene. The visual effects guru is very meticulous about the level of authenticity of the zombies. In terms of the world of The Walking Dead, of course, authenticity is tremendously important to me in terms of how the walkers look and more specifically how they move, Nicotero explains. Still, he doesn't insist that all the walkers should look and move the same so the actors are free to bring their own personality to their characters to some extent. Walking around like Frankenstein's monster or mumbling about eating brains certainly won't do. The common guidelines from Greg Nicotero are as follows. First, don't walk in straight lines. Walk like people leaving a bar late at night. And second, keep your look focused, because walkers aren't looking around for butterflies. And remember that sometimes walkers can be a bit more animated than usual, like lions getting close to their prey. By the way, do you know what the extras eat on set when they are supposed to eat humans? 
The flesh they eat is in fact ham, covered in barbecue sauce, which both tastes good and looks like blood. By the way, when the extras have lunch in real life, they usually sit apart from the rest of the cast and crew members. Well, that's quite understandable. Who would be able to have an appetite when the person across the table only has half a face? Which of these behind-the-scenes facts about the walkers surprised you the most? Would you like to become an extra on the set of The Walking Dead? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for staying with Awesome Movies!